Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the show. As you know, London has been rocked recently for the past couple of weeks by a spate of knife crime, which has actually um, triggered a concern as to what is really happening. Over 119 fatalities have happened in London since with knife crime. And it is now the time that we cannot afford to stay silent. We have to do something. Now today I'm joined by a lady, a mother, who has suffered losing her son. And we're going to listen to her and understand the other side of it because there are many different sides to our knife crime. And there's something that we can learn so we can inspire others and other mothers as well. Miss Collett Hunter, good morning, good afternoon. How are you? Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming today. And I'm glad that um, I was actually um, introduced to you recently because I'm glad that you came on because knife crime and persons speaking up and speaking out is something that many people don't want to do because there's this fear culture. But I'm glad that you came. And um, let's, let's talk about this. Okay. Thank you. You moved to the UK in 2009 with your sons. That's that is correct. James Ross Hunter, the late, Ryan Bowden, Browdy Hunter, your two sons, and you wanted to have a life in the UK. What happened? Uh, what happened is a nightmare. Mm. Nothing that I expected. Yes. Leaving Jamaica to the UK is anyone's dream. Mm. Because you see the UK. London yes. as a place of opportunity and coming here with my son gave them an avenue to make friends yes. without judging anyone mm. and losing James five years after has really put a pain here that yes. I deal with I try to deal with it every day yes, yes, in yes. a positive way as possibly as I mm. can and by doing what I'm doing now for young people, yes. that encourages me and gives me the opportunity to continue this love that I still have for others, yes. even though the loss was a sudden one for us. Yeah. And, and, <clears throat> and before you came here, what was James like? I mean, he was in Jamaica, Monroe College. Understand. Yes, yes, he's coming from Monroe College, mm -hmm. and um, he was very active in his school there. He was captain for his class. Yes. He also was vice captain for the under 14 football team. Yes. And he was also a member of a swim club. Yes. And he also do, did tennis, okay. also a bit of karate as well. So he was very active and he had a lot to live for. Yes. And he also had a lot to offer to individuals that come along his way. Right, right. So let, let's go straight into it. So um, that faithful night or day um 2014 14 yes yeah. if you can explain to it because i want it's better you, it's, you share share it to us in a way because the purpose of you coming on the show is to really give the other side from a mother you know um someone has been affected if you can tell tell the audience what happened on the day that i lost james um we actually had a conversation prior to that day because he always shared with me things that he see that he wish he could make a change for, for yes. individuals. There was a time that we were driving through Catford mm -hmm. and there was that football field. I used to go with him, to, with his friends to yeah. play. And we were on the bus and he said to me, Mom, you know, my friends don't have anywhere else to go. And he literally had tears in his eyes. He said, they have sold it. Oh, it's, the I think it's that field next to Lawrence House in Catford. Okay. I think they, you, you used to could go like with six. You could get your team yes. and you would go, because I would go with him and, and his friends. Cars yeah, it, it's, the yeah, it's sold. I think it's, I don't know if it's a St. Dunstan College. Right. They, they bought, it's now privatized. Right. Right. Okay. So, he said, we can't go anymore. Mm. 
where my friend's supposed to go. And he, he literally had tears in his eyes yes. then. I remember sitting with him, mm -hmm. talking and sharing things that he would see. And he would come back to me and he would say, Mom, how do you know if someone is changing? Yes. How do you know that somebody is really changing? And I would say to him, you never know. Because it takes time for you to tell mm. the true color of someone. There was a time he said, Mom, there's a friend I want to take back to college with me, you know. I said, yeah. And I remember the morning that we were going, I said, what happened to your friend? Mm. He said, oh, Mom, they're not going to make it. And I said, all right, let's go. This was when he got enrolled at Bromley College. Yeah. We then went through a series of shoes will be coming back to the house. Mm. The doorbell ring. And look, there's a coat or I said, jeans? Wait. Oh, he said, Mom, my friends, they had a party to go to. Yeah. <laughs> and they wanted to look real nice. Yeah. So, you know, I said, yeah, you can, you know, have this outfit to wear. Yeah. I then realized that he was beyond himself with giving yeah. and sharing. And no matter what would happen to him, he tend to let it go yes. without judging. I remember when he did his maths um, exam. And he came home from school, St. Matthew's Academy. Yeah. And I said, how was, how was the exam today? And he said, Mom, I don't think I did too well, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, why? What happened? He said, well, I was on the bus. It diverted and it stopped at New Cross and I had to get off. And this guy approached me and he asked me what type of phone I had. So I said, oh, Blackberry. He then pulled his, his, sh his jacket and showed a gun and said, let's go for a walk. So I'm always, for me to get information out, no matter what's happening in here, I try to hold it in a bit, not yeah. to panic, just to keep the conversation flowing. Yes. So I said, really? Wow. So what did you do? Oh, I just told him I was going to be late for my exam and I just run for the other bus. <laughs> at that point, mm. at that point, I was like, God, whoa, is this really real? I, I was literally shocked, but I couldn't let him feel that yeah. shock. I wanted him to still go through and to, um, you know, get on with his life and yeah. to know that whatever obstacle come your way, you know, God will see you through and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Exam came. He was the first one in his batch to get his GCSE maths. Yes. I didn't know at that time that he was staying back in school and tutoring. Mm -hmm. I met the young lady. She's now at Cardiff University. She came to my last event at TNG Youth Center. We did a workshop for communities there. And she said to me, everyone at my university knew James yes, as yeah. the boy who helped me mm. with my maths. I sat with him. I started to pray a lot because we are based, our home is Christian based. Because yes. we don't judge no one. Everyone religion is their own. Yes. It boils down to one God. Mm -hmm. So that connection was there in our home. I was at work and he called me. I was working in Wimbledon in doing um, insurance with some insurance brokers. Yes. I was telesale training the staff to use the phone and all. And he called me and I said, I'm on the phone. I can't speak. Are you okay? Because I'm wondering <coughs> what in the middle. You never called me at work yes. before. I said, you okay? He said, yes, mom. I said, where are you? I'm in a church. He said, what are you doing in a church? He said the doors were open, and I just walked in. And I said, who is there? He said, oh, some cleaners. I said, all right, I got to go. When I come home, you tell me more about it. Mm. We spoke about this incident. 
before he died, about five, six months or so, we were walking in Wells Park. Yeah. They planted a tree there in his memory because we always spend a lot of time in the park and he loved the park as well. Yes. Played a lot of tennis. Every Sunday we have a tennis match. I give them a five between him and his brother. Yeah. He said to me, Mom, you know I know what people are thinking when I look at them, you know? Because I remember at one point he had had to break up. They said, Mom, I have to get cab to school. Yeah. He said, Mom, I know what people are thinking, you know. Because you go on the bus and I know what they're yeah. thinking. But he said, you remember that man I told you about in the church? Mm -hmm. When I went in the church, he said, son, what brought you here today? He said, Mom, he looked me in my eyes. He didn't judge me. He looked me in my eyes. And he said, Mom, you know, he gave me a Bible. And he said, I found 10 pounds in it as well. Mm. And when I heard that, I felt, because I said, yes. He's reading his Bible. He's conscious of his surrounding. And he knows and appreciates beautiful things yeah. and beautiful people. Mm. The day that James died, I was traveling to see his dad in central London. And this feeling just came over me. And I was reflecting on our previous conversations yes. about people, about caring. I said to him, I know. He said to me, Mom, you know I'm loved. I'm loved, you know, Mom. I said, that's a good feeling. We'd go to the youth center. He would meet friends, mm -hmm. all sorts of friends. And he said, Mom, there are some friends I can't carry home, you know. But they're good people. Not because some, you know, are naughty. They're good people out there. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's all right. But said, hold on to your light. Because I see your light is shared. Yeah. But you're young. And I sat with him, you're young, and I'm going to lose you because of that love you have. Because yes. yes. he, was, he was just like this beacon. He would embrace everyone, mm -hmm. every child, every person. He would not judge anyone. He would sit with you, spend time yeah. with you, and understand that person. And I said to him, I'm going to lose you because of that love you have. You're too young with this love. You know, you need to hold it in a bit. He looked at me. I'll never forget that moment. This was about coming to be about now going up close to the third month or so closer mm -hmm. to the period that I lost him. He said, Mom, I know you're right, but I'm prepared to face the consequences of my behavior. Which is a positive behavior. When he said that to me, I didn't say one word. I was praying, lighting a candle every night. And this was a revelation that came, that this child was on a journey of loving, of caring, and on embracing everyone for who they are. I left the room, went into my other son in Ryan's room, and I sat down. I said, Ryan, turn the Xbox, turn your game off. I need to talk to you. Up it, the first time this year, he literally said to me, Mom, remember that night when you came into my room mm -hmm. and you asked me to turn my game off? Mm -hmm. And I did. And you said to me, we're going to lose James because he's on a special journey. Mm -hmm. You said, Mom, how did you know? And I said to him, I pray. It's something that came to me. You pray for answers. And if you're looking for answers in the right place, mm -hmm. if your heart is at peace and it's, it's in a good place, yeah. you will get answers. And I said, that's how I know. And James confirmed it with me just now. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> when I heard I got the call 
that James was stabbed. I'm always sending him because I know that was, he was always on that journey. I was very close to him. So if he walked past me, if I wake in the morning, I grab him and I hug him. If he's, walk past, you know, if he's walking past me, I grab him and I hug him. He told his girlfriend at the time that, Mom, just keep hugging me all the time. Trying to get a much of him. Yes. And I looked at him. When I got the call, I came home. I've never ordered Chinese before in the house. And something just say, let's have Chinese, order Chinese. And I called him and I said, we're having Chinese for dinner. I said, okay, mom. Even that the whole Bailey during the trial, they see all our conversations that we had. Okay. And I remember he didn't come home as yet and I had, I was lying in the bed. And then I just woke up. And it probably was at that time that he got stabbed because then my mind just ran on him and my flashes on him and I woke up, I jumped up and then the phone rang. And then I got the call, he was stabbed. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, is, this it? is he going to survive this, to continue to do what he's meant to do yeah. or is this it? I remember I got up and I went to the room, I said to my son, I'm going to, James didn't stop. I'm going down the road to see, because literally across the road, across the park from where we lived. And I said, you don't want to come with me, I'll go. And he said, no, mom, I'm coming. When we walked down there, ambulance was there. The old area was corned off. And as we started to go towards where the, his body was, the police said, is that Colette? I said, yes, it's Colette. I turned to my son and I said, the ambulance isn't moving, he's gone. And at that point, we hug each other and just literally just hit the ground. I wanted to see him. I just feel that if I would, if I see him, I said, James. They said no, because um, the way it was that I last saw him wasn't the way he was looking. Mm. Yes, it, it's a night mayor for. Everyone that is affiliated with a debt in this country. It is a continuous nightmare, all because it's still happening. Yes. It is beyond acceptance. Yes. I, I was fortunate to have a bond with my child. I was fortunate to talk with him about every single thing. There is nothing that I don't know about my child. We discuss things. We talk about what is wrong. We spoke about what is right. When I came here, I saw that knife crime was here before, before yeah. I had meetings. I sat and I said, whoa, look at this. Look at what's in the paper today. What is going on? Mm. And yet, when you walk out into the street after a death, you don't see anything as to say this is what happened. Yes. This is what we're doing. There wasn't anything visually. Nothing at all. And I said to my son, something is wrong. How can so many children mm. are being killed? Yes. And they're talking about from 2014 there. Before yes. About and there was nothing. Yes. Not to know that the loss of my son would put me into this 
position now mm -hmm. to try and get visual awareness out publicly in every community. Yes. You drive through every community, you don't see anything to show the consequences of carrying knives. Mm -hmm. And there's so many lives being taken. Where is the visuality? See, last year they said it was 85 <coughs> at um, the, f the end of the year. And so far it's 120, well, 190. And, uh, and it's increasing as well. Um, so <coughs> what, what are some of the... It's like you're carrying on James' work in a sort of way. In it? some sort of way. Yeah. Because th this was who he was. He was, he, he just loved to be with people. Mm. He loved everyone. The old, the young, random people stopped me on the road. I started the charity before his funeral. Yes. Because I had managed to get so much healing yes. from his journey based on how we talk, what I discovered. Yes. The, the, my mom coming to the UK was a bit of a struggle for the mm. funeral. I mean, we had excellent support from the Victim Support Unit. We had an excellent police team yes. that worked with us, that helped with the process to get my mom here. We had to fight for her to come, yes. basically, because she didn't get the visa for the first, for the, the first, funeral, yeah. so we had to reapply. But with the second application, we got help with the MP yes. for the area at the time. And to rush her to the funeral, they had to meet her on the plane, escort her off the plane. Wow. So that was extended by the police wow. force. Mm -hmm. So they blue light her all the way from the airport to the funeral. To the funeral. Mm -hmm. She brought James books with her because we wanted to create postcard to go towards the charity yeah, fundraising. Yeah. The day after the funeral was when we found a sketch that James made of the scene when he died. Yes. The exact description by the witness was in his book, the last three pages. I didn't know what it meant at first until I went to the trial. And that was exactly what he drew. Mm. On one page, he wrote, Five years later, he didn't put anything else in his own and writing five years later. 2014? Yeah. So that was done in 2000? 2000. 2014, yeah. he died, and he came here 2009. Nine. So 2009 to 2014 is five years and he wrote later. That 2000. Because that's only where your granny could have had that, his grand, because she was in? In Jamaica. In Jamaica. So all these books <coughs> are coming from Jamaica. Wow. So he, this was a period in his life, between 11 and 12 years old, I couldn't stop him from drawing. Mm. He mm. was controlled by his hands and books and yes. at one point I said, if you draw anymore, I'm going to be broke. I can't afford any more of these books. Mm. So this is why I thought, if I get these books over, I can find pictures to go towards the charity for yes. the postcard. Yes. The day after the funeral, we're going through, you know, comforting, yeah. going through the books. And that's when I saw it. Five years later, he wrote on one page. On the other page, he drew the, the guy. His favorite character was Goku, Dragon Ball. Yeah. So Goku had the knife in the right hand. Right. That's what the witness said. The boy had the knife in the right hand. And there was blood on it when the boy held the knife up. So in the picture, James had the knife in the right hand. Mm -hmm. He smeared the knife. He draw drops coming from the knife, mm. and he wrote blood under it as if to make sure I see it and blood. understand. Yeah. The witness said that he went. There was a group of boys with knife. The boy that James went in to save didn't even know his name because at the, the police statement said. When they said to him, you know, the boy died, he said, oh, do you know him? He said, I know he live up on Westwood Hill, because mm. that's where we lived before. Yeah. So he draw, the witness said he went in punching at the group of boys with knives. Mm. So there were like at least five or seven with knives. Yes. 
stabbing at the boy now on the ground who was kicking for his life. Was Jane was trying to say? Yeah, mm -hmm. he was stabbed three times. That's a boy on the ground. Yeah. yeah. When James decided to go in. Yeah. So James went in because the only thing he said at the trial was he didn't talk because you know these young people are afraid of snitching mm -hmm. or whatever. He said, "I was on the ground. The hall had knives at me." James came over, punched them off me, and they butchered him. Mm. That was all he said at the trial. So the police had to use the records from the, the evening mm. that they collected as evidence in the system. So the drawing show him. He drew the motion mm. going in. And you know when you throw the power ball, yeah. when you... There was five that was thrown in the drawing, and there were five boys that were charged wow. for his murder. In the middle of the drawing, he drew a dragon. My, my, how I feel about that is the fact that at that moment, yeah. he could have been able to probably get a knife from one of them because the witness said they couldn't manage him and they ran. The last one that was there, he was sweeping the floor, punching at him, sweeping the floor to mm. get the knife from him. But the boy switched it from one hand to the other, right. stabbed him in the heart straight away. Mm. That dragon in that means to me, if James had gotten that knife, he'd probably would be the one taking a life. Yes. He'll probably be the one become a, to become a dragon. Right. So this, the, the devil would have won in the midst, right. but instead he went as a peacemaker. Mm. Blessed are the peacemaker, they shall be called the children, children of God. Yeah. So the dragon didn't get James soul because he saved another, went as a peacemaker. Mm. So after I see that drawing that day, and I found out later on what it meant, to me that helped me as to say, I've done my best. Yes. He is a child of God, and he's fine where he's, he's at right now. Right, right. So tell me, um, the, the boys who actually committed the murder, or the one, were, were they all, I understand they were all convicted, or was one? Uh, they're all, yeah, they're, they're, <coughs> yeah all five. Yes. The one that actually stabbed James, because they ran, because yes. they couldn't control him, you know, they ran, because the judge said to the one that is sent away, you could have run with your friends, you know? You mm. had the knife then, why didn't you run? Mm. But we all know that young boys, only 16 at the time, yeah. the anger in here consumed them mm. and caused grievous act yeah. on each other. O on the bus, you're talking about during the trial, on the bus they were, the boys were crouching. Can you explain that bit there? Which the, the, what the police did, they show evidence that the boy that James saved had an altercation with one of this, these boy mm -hmm. friend. Saw him, took away a knife from him because he was showing off with the knife. Took yeah. away the knife, chopped the knife. He then got on his phone, texted his friends, yeah. and like he would said, symbol, just disrespected me, and yes. took away my shank. This is going to be a wrap. Wow. So the police even went as far as that to show, <coughs> to backtrack everything. Yeah. So he's texting his friends to say they're going, it's going to be a wrap with that boy. That's the and boy that James said. Term to say so there's going to be some altercation. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes. so they show the boys then traveling to Wells Park. This is outside near TNG. This is where James usually go now with, yes. with his friends. You know, they make music there at the youth center and hang out. Show them traveling to the youth center mm. and show them leaving the youth center. Mm. This is after killing James. They're leaving Wells Park Road. This is after stabbing James. Sitting on the bus, coming on the bus, not holding onto the railing, holding here with the railing, hoodies, all hooded up. Yeah, yeah. Um, not talking to each other at first. Get on the bus, one in a the corner there, one in the corner there, pretending like they don't know each other. Right. This, I could hear the siren now moving towards where James was. I remember sitting at the whole building and I said to myself, oh my God, 
that's the siren going to save my son or the police on the way or and mm -hmm. look and then look here look at the bus look what happening then when the siren and everything pass yeah they all cluttered together in the back mm. then the one who stabbed james showed how he stabbed him laughing mm. i remember i when i saw that i thought i was going to pass out but then i looked up at the lights and i swear i remember be still and know that i'm god i mm. know that god was with me yeah and those lights just flare up and just bring me back to reality at first you're walking you see these boys you want to hug them yeah. you, you don't know you, you're like oh there must be a really an explanation for this but then when these things materialize in front of you the laughing the no remorse that's how they operated in no court. no nothing mm. waving at your friends like it's i was like oh my god this is not normal Mm. There is nothing normal about this. Something, something is wrong here. And I sat there, went through the trial for six weeks, and watched that clip over and over again. I remember the witness that came, the mother that was with James. She spoke how she held him, how she put her hand to stop the bleeding. Mm. She cried so much. I sat with her and I, you know, I shared James' story. And, yes. and you know, she, she, we hugged and she was, she was a lot better, you know. And for the young lady, Tilly, that put him in the recovery position, Tilly must have been about 14 at that time, mm. 13 at that time. She was there, give him CPR. He was, he was surrounded by so much love. Yeah, yeah. So much love. But those boys on the bus was an awakening moment for me when mm. I saw that. And I did forgive them. End of the trial. I wrote a letter. They wanted to put it in the media. I said, no, this is personally. Mm. You can let them know. Because I want to forgive, to move on, mm. to continue my journey and to be there for others as well. How, was, how does Ryan um, deal with it now? Ryan is very strong mm. and influential in what I do with the charity. Yes. Non-profit organization at the moment. Yes, yes. <laughs> but he's always there with me. Um, he supports me in everything. He's very caring, very mm. concerned with what I do, very protective. Mm. Um, how he deals with it, he does his music, does music and production at the yes, moment, yes. does a lot of reading, and he interacts well with people at, at mm -hmm. his school. He, he was called to do an yeah. inspirational talk yes. to young people at his um, past mm -hmm. high school. So how he's dealing with it is on a very mature level, yeah. and I suppose what helps is the fact that we talk, and because I knew what was going to hap happen to James based on his love, it kind of, it helps. Yeah. It helps him in a way that it doesn't bring him down. Yeah. It makes him stronger. It makes him more aware. He said to me once, Mom, you teach me, you teach us so much love. I didn't know mm. what's happening out there really exists. Why? Mm. Why so much love, I said, mm. Mm. is to teach you that when bad things come your way and evil come your way, you will recognize it. Mm. That's how beautiful love is, because not a lot of people have love. I want to ask, um, and, and moving this on, um, you know, uh, the boys, they were convicted, and they went down for how long? The, the one for James, 16 years without parole, parole years, cause yeah. because of his age, yeah. and the other one... I think three, four years. Four years. Um, the, the boy that instigated it, even though he wasn't on the scene, he, he sent his friend to do it, you know. Yes. He, his excuse was that he was babysitting, so he wasn't even there. Yes. So what the judge did, she also gave him 
some time. Okay, okay. Now, uh, th th there's a lady, I think, on Facebook recently is talking about her son being stabbed about eight or so times, and lots of people talking about it. What do you see as the cause? Because you have been into this now, the cause of this spate of knife crime and the solutions. I know we'll talk about the charity and the different works that you're doing so people can know about that. But what do you see as a cause and, the, and, the, and some of the solutions now? Because, you know. Well, if you want to know the cause, mm. you will look into the newspaper and it's the same circle. Yeah. Because it's the same thing people keep repeating, yeah. right? Home life, gangs affiliation, mm. no parenting, lack of principles, no support, mm. no father. Knowing that a lot of people that I know are a single mom and they mm. have excellent kids. Yes. So I think that's a taboo. Yeah. Um, all of that is chasing the tail. Mm. I call it chasing the tail because everybody keeps saying that. Yeah. What is the solution? What I think the solution is, is to get into these homes. Mm. Find out what's happening in the homes with these boys. Something is wrong. Mm. I've spoken to moms. Oh, I have my son. Well, not bi biologically. Mm. For two years. And I can't control him. He stopped going to college. He goes off for a week at a time. Uh, if he comes home and there's nothing to cook, he's upset. I'm coming down the staircase the other day. Mm. He tur turned the light off on me. Mm. I said, didn't you see me coming down the staircase? He said, well, turn it on yourself. Mm. You tell me, this is a mother that is frustrated. This is a boy doing as he pleases. Mm. What is the situation that can happen to this boy on the road? Just use your imagination. Yeah. He can either get stabbed or he can either stab someone. So, he's at home. This is a mom. She's in crisis. She needs help. She don't need the social care. You can't touch the child in this country. Yeah. You pick the phone up, you will be arrested. So who will come to this mother's aid. No, I'm not talking about one mom. Yes. I'm talking about millions of moms in this country, believe it or not, yeah. have kids that they cannot control. Children who are disrespectful, yes. that don't have any manners, that do not care, who cannot fight. Mm. So they will take a knife and run. To resolve things. And then run, mm. and then hide, and then create more grief, more victims, more pain, and more mm. people chasing their tails. What we need to do, go into these homes, mm. find out who these children are. I'm sure if a mom say, Silborn, I need help. Yes, there are groups out there yeah. helping young people. So yeah. many of them. Totally amazing. This is the blessed country in the yeah. fact that there's groups, yes. there are people who love. Yes, but that's not, this is bigger than us. This is something that the government will have to grab by the horn. Yes. yes. This is something that <coughs> need a different level of dealing with. Mm. This is going into the homes, getting you still born out of that home. You're 17, mm. you're not behaving yourself. Your mom says, this is what happened. She has evidence, she's not lying. We're taking you away. You're going to a boot camp. Boot camp. You're going to a boot camp. National mm. services, do they need people in the army here? Do uh, they need well, people well, to well, train? Well, just recently they're saying that they're going to relax the immigration so they can get more people from the Commonwealth to come here. Why? We have so many young boys mm. that need discipline. And they're lovely kids. They just mm. need some discipline, discipline and respect. You're being disrespectful to your mom, your dad, your teacher, mm. an adult. is wrong. You need discipline. No one hates you. Mm. No one hates these kids. They just need love. Yeah. They just need <coughs> guidance. Yeah. And one little group here can't help. Because we're talking about a bonfire of kids that need a system. So stop chasing the tails. Keep going on in circles. It's, uh, it's so annoying because each time I watch people chase the tail, another child die. The same thing, keep going around yes. again. Yes. And then BBC started yes. to the programs. And you're right about that because I go, how I met you was because uh, I put up uh, one of the BBC program 
asked me to see if I can get a, a, a mother or someone who has been directly affected. And that's why somebody linked me to you. But then it's the same thing which happens every time there's a spate of crime. Yes. They have these programs yes. all over again. Is that a danger? I don't voice want I, I know. I gave up television yeah. when I lost James. Well, thank you for um, coming on. Well, you're welcome. Yeah. I gave up television. I just embrace, do what I can for my mm. community, give and share as much as I can. But we need to stop chasing our tails. This is a desperate time. Yeah. It cannot get any worse. It, it, it's a joke for some. What, what do you think about stop and search? Stop and search? When, when was the last time you see it? Mm. When was the last time you've seen a stop and search? I mean, hardly much now because of... Have you ever seen any? But I don't know. I've not personally seen one, actually. Okay. Yeah. So that goes to show, mm. where is it? Mm. Curfew. Have you seen any? Now, someone was saying to me, also, the parents need to curfew the children, but I said... But this is a parents out of control. Parents out of control. They cannot control your six-foot son. Yes. And you four-foot here. And you're, doing, yes. and you're looking up at your baby that you love, even though he's a monster looking down at you. You're thinking about, I bring this boy in this world. Mm. I need to fix him, and I can't. Look at his behavior. I need help. <coughs> this is when somebody come into your home, sit yes. with you, and say, this is what we're going to do. Yes. Or else. Or else. Why, why wait until they go to prison? Yes. Why wait until they take a life? Let them go to prison, then they come out of prison, mm -hmm. and then you sign off a, a, a house for them out in the country, a, a car out mm -hmm. in the country. Why you do it then? Why you don't protect them from going into Before. prison? Because the abusers, the killers, the murderers, they all get new ID and get mm -hmm. shifted away while the victims stay here. And so what, so what you're Feel saying, the pain. what you're saying, a lot of resources is putting into the after sentencing, after they have done the Obviously, thing. I've met mothers mm. whose child has been stabbed and the perpetrator family, not enough evidence, not enough proof, even though mm. maybe because one or two witnesses didn't show up, nobody wants to snitch. Of course, yes. So guess what happened? That family get moved away. The perpetrator family. I've met a mom whose son was beaten to death, 15 year old. Mm. The person that beat him to death got six years, two years out after good behavior, and then the old family get moved away. Wow. Yes. So let's stop mm. chasing the tail. It's not making sense, isn't it? It's not adding up. Stop chasing the tail now. Let's get into homes. Mm. Let's eradicate these boys that have issue into a boot camp and get them sorted yeah. out. So what you're talking about is you're going deep into the source. Yes, but that's deep, where it comes from. But that's where, we need to, that's where we need to go. If you have cancer, what do you do? Yeah, you go deep down. If you have cancer, you try to cut it out. Yes. First, you try to cure it. And if you cannot cure it, you go deep. And it keep it coming, coming, coming. Then you have to make up your mind to cut it out. Yes. You're not doing these boys no wrong. You're doing them good. Mm. You're saving our children on the street. So the, the, you, you have done a lot of work and, and you're doing these work. How are the, the people, like the mothers, um, are they listening? Or are you sh okay, it is one thing for them to get into the house. How do you get into the house? Get into the house? Yeah. You how, mean, yeah, how do we get into the house of these persons? Oh, you mean how to get, you mean get into the individual home? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's this mother. You create a hotline. I, 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 yeah, tell me about I would that. like to bet you some money tonight. Yes. You create a hotline. And you said, mothers, you need help with your teenager. Yeah. Da, 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 da. That line will be burning, burning up in London. Yes. But you, you see it a lot. You, you, I, I, I must confess. Because if a mother mm. know that their child have an issue. I was approached by this gentleman that works in the community with young people. And he said to me, right now he's aware of a 14-year-old boy that is involved. And the mother came to him yeah. looking for help. And he said, I don't know what to tell her because it's all politics. Because he wouldn't get the help that 
they will take him away, mm. put him into custody, or, but that's not what he need. He need proper discipline. Yes. He needs to show respect. Yes. We have cadets and we have all those things, but no, they need like a boot camp away so they can find themselves. Yeah. Boot camp away and get into the family, get into the home. Yes, so they can find themselves who yeah. they are. No, no messing around. No. Not changing the tail, not going around in circles. No. Well, tell me some of the different projects you're doing now so people can know. What we do at the moment, <coughs> every spring, we have a, 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 a special event for all organizations yes. that work with young people, our communities, to get together. Yes. You share with us. Bring your booth, your flyers, it's free, yes. at TNG Youth Center in Sydney. Um, we have refreshment, yes. uh, music. If you're a speaker, mm. you can book a, you know, book a slot yes. to speak to the young people. I love to be a part of it. You know. Would love to have you. Yeah. Um, get them aware of themselves. Mm. Show them opportunities. And identity is a key factor. Yes. Know who they are. Yes. Yeah. Know that they're special. Yes. Let them know that they're unique. Mm. That they're not two of a kind. They're one. Yes. So we do that every spring. Um, next month is our Christmas social for the community so say you want to come play a few games at domino mm. with your friends we have free food and refreshments yes. for the young people we have a show time where you if you can sing play the piano uh, or, <laughs> or do the violin whatever you can do <laughs> come and be a part of it last yeah. year we had the the most beautiful um song done by Pamela Rowe the Lord's mm. Prayer in the ancient language. It was amazing. I mean, mm. she literally, I felt elevated from the ground yes. and back down when she sang at the event. Yes. Nina uh, from Scrub, she was there with her. Um, Thanks, Nina, for yeah. introducing me to you. Yeah. <laughs> Nina. Yeah. Nina was there with her, her yeah. things and her, you know, her friends came over. And so it was a big family atmosphere. So yes. that will be next month. We hope to do a workshop next month um, with the young people. Um, aspiring writers, we're doing a theatre yeah. production uh, with Spontaneous Production in right. Sydney. It's going to be James 5th anniversary mm. coming May, so it's going to be recognised his 5th anniversary. So we hope to do two productions, two shows, one at TNG and one at the Sydney Centre. Yeah. Now this is base for young people. Mm. So you'll be working along with professionals. Mm. So mm. you'll be trained you know, and how to write if you want to work backstage yes. production. Yes. So, so that's in the making um, for next month. We're going to have gifts um, for mm -hmm. the young ones mm -hmm. and we're going to have a fancy dress parade okay, and okay. showtime as well. And, and where can people find like the different work that you're doing? Uh, um, I'm on yeah. Facebook, yeah. Um, James Rosanta Youth Support. I also have a blog spot that I yeah. try to keep updated. We have a website. Um, pretty much if you put James Rose on to you'd support yeah. everything that pops up. We're on Instagram. We're also on Twitter. Yes. So everything is there. We have our daisy pin. Yes. Make sure. Where's yes. your daisy pin? Well, actually, <laughs> I know I got it. Yeah. It's on your other code. <laughs> yes. So we have our daisy pin. Yes. Um, your pin shows support and display support for victims. Yes of knife crime and violence wow. and it's also a conversation piece so if you want to talk about knife crime yes. you wear a daisy and yes. you can say I'm wearing this because it's um, bringing awareness yes. to knife crime and also our poster competition that is ongoing yes. uh, we put our posters on the bus stops so mm -hmm. no knife should be in the posters it must be colorful yes. with a positive message yes. And we hope to have one in every community yes. in London yes. on the bus stop. So this is going to take major mm. funding. Mm. So <laughs> we're always looking for donations. Yeah. So um, that's our poster competition that's ongoing. And we also have Potter Love. We call it Potter Love, yeah. meaning that you can invite your friends around for a meal. And I can arrange for you to have little flyers and information about okay. the charity to give them and for keepsake, like little lanyard or so. So all of this is a way of building network and Yes, and, yes. The and communication. The yeah. workshop that we do, we have a community workshop and we share information at this workshop. Mm. I pretty much share 
my waking moments, what keep me going, mm -hmm. and I also share ways how we can communicate. So it's yes. a workshop for both young and old. So it's for school, organization, or community events, we do this one. Uh, and where do you get all this energy? <laughs> I don't know, you know. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I surprise myself sometimes. Yes. I, I don't know. It's, I think it's come, it come from, from inside. Sometimes yeah. I'm walking and I feel it's as if somebody is carrying me. Yes, yes, <laughs> Something yes. just keep me going. Yes. I was always, you know, on the ball, I suppose. What, what, what's your word um, or encouragement to mothers out there who are struggling or even mothers who have been in your similar situation? What is the word of encouragement to, to, to help them going through? Because there are mothers out there. Because some of the cases that we are here is just some. There are yeah. more. <laughs> I, I would say, take it one day at a time. Um, Rome was built in a day, neither with your healing journey. Each moment will be different. And if you feel like you want to cry, cry. Make it a good one as well. I remember doing that one night. Mm. And in the morning, I was at the bus stop about to call my friend, Heather Ann. The feather fell right in my hand mm. on my phone. I don't know where it came from. I'm like, wow, I still have a character role with mm. me. So you will receive healing if you just let go, let God. It's not an easy task. Lying in your bed, not wanting to go out. What I used to do, I'd start with taking the garbage out. Make that move. Even if you feel like you don't want to go out, bring something to the bin. Mm and back. Play one of your favorite songs. One of these days you will dance to it. Mm. It will not get overly better. You just have to take it step by step and look for the little things that brings you smile. Look for the little things that make you feel alive. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's even to sit in the park on a bench with a sandwich, with your favorite drink, you'd be amazing how you get through each day. Mm. People ask and, you know, they say, I would have never known, you know, at work, mm. you know, my boss, because I do, I work with Lloyd's now yes, and yes. Sainsbury and my manager at Sainsbury said, Colette, I never know this happened to you. He just mm -hmm. found out this year. Because I was begging for stuff for the charity, so I had to put my details on. And he said, I would never know. Oh my God, he was so overwhelmed with emotions. Yes. Um, it's not every mother get the clarity like I did. Yes. It's not every mother get the justice like I did. And yes. that must be so painful, mm. not knowing who what, who mm. or what. That is so heartbreaking. Well, there's a gentleman in Penge, I uh, forget his name, I think it's a year now, his son has died and no, no known person. And they saw the five bicycles riding off or so. Like and that. no witness, no and one and come, no one forward, come forward, no one wants to get involved. Yeah. You know, my thinking is this, you know, um, I said it sometimes, it's a bit funny, but the word that came to me was, people now have to give up the ghost. And when I say give up the ghost, People have to be like the James. People have to now put themselves in as heroes. A hero do not think of himself. No. A hero only think of what his purpose is there at the moment. A hero has his life, has his families and everything. But yet a hero will go and save one person. Yeah. Putting his life in the way. And I believe the whole thing with snitching and all those sort of things. People have to start to make some decisions which is similar to martyrdom. Because that one life may save thousands. Yeah. But if we all, and this is what is happening, call it, we're all protecting ourselves. Yeah. Nobody all, wants to get involved. We're all secure yes. in our corners. We're all mm -hmm. staying in the safety of our comfort zone, yes. the safety of the shores. People do not want to go into, well, the world is now where people want. People don't want to venture too far. No. Everybody's holding on to safe, what? Yes. Plain safe. And the plain safe is killing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, another thing I say is this it's like suicide. If you're killing yourself, 
is suicide. Boys are killing each other. Mm -hmm. So it's like a community killing itself. Yeah. And it's suicide. Generations gone. Generations gone. Tons and tons. Yeah. One child yeah. have how many friends? How many is in that child's mm -hmm. school? Mm -hmm. How many family members that child has? Mm -hmm. How many people it affect in the community? How many thousand mm -hmm. is that? That's just one. Sure. How many children have died on the street? Mm -hmm. Do the maths. Yes. Millions. Millions yes. hurting out here. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard Call It Hunter and um, profound and uh, real and no messing around, um, not going around in circles. And you know what? It's very simple. <laughs> we have just got to do something instead of waiting for others to do it. It's not simple really, but it's like a decision that one has to make. Um, because I believe that at the end of the day, we all have a responsibility. And we, as a community, you know, call it, I believe the community also is not just the black community, is everybody within yes. the geographical, the nation has got to take responsibility because guess what? The government is now saying we are going to stop and search, we're going to get more police out there, but it's still the knee-jerk reaction, isn't mm -hmm. it? Still a knee-jerk reaction. Yeah. As I said, it's a home. It's a home. It's the home. Because yeah. even you do the stop and search, you do the mm -hmm. curfew, they'll know when you're out there stopping and searching. They know when the curfew is on, the phone is live, ping, ping, ping. They know what's going on. Yeah. And also, if you, they start to stagger the school hours, as they were saying, well, those guys will just stagger themselves as exactly. well. Exactly. <laughs> you have to target the home. We yeah. have, we, we uh, literally start a petition hoping to get Oh yes, the petition. The, please yeah, to, oh, yeah, I'm hoping to get the, the, the relevant authority to give us one day, one day, just one day. That's all we victims are asking for, to highlight the work done by all these amazing organizations right. with young people. Right. And mm -hmm. also, this one day is when everyone, no matter where they are in their home, they can light a candle in recognition mm -hmm. of that child that's been gone, mm -hmm. that candle in that community representing how many has been taken from mm. that community. We yeah. need one day to share this. I'm surprised that we don't have it as yet. Yes. Millions gone mm. and no acknowledgement to our pain. Mm. As if it will go away like that? No, yes. it will not go yeah. away. Yeah. I'm just hoping and praying that one day somebody with a kind heart mm. will make kindness prevail among us victims because mm. we will never forget our children. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And Lovely to be here. Pleasure is mine. Blessings. And, and all the best. Thank you. you do. Thank you so much. And guess what? God is with you. I know. And he's the one carrying you. I know. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> carrying you, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. And for those on Facebook and um, for those who are going to be on a replay and also for the edited show as well. Um, I want to thank you. Please share this video and take the message which is out there, what uh, Ms. Hunter has said. It's profound, it's serious, and it's now your time to act. Thank you very much, and have a good night. No life, no crime, guys. Wherever it's happening, find it if you can in your community and spread your message.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.